every time I go online to check out ads for new synths or a YouTube video about an, about an old classic from the 80s or 90s, there are always a few synths that particularly catch my interest. Synths that in some way appeal to me, synths that I can afford, and synths that occasionally show up on local selling sites. Uh, and these are the ones I want to talk about for a short moment from now on. And if you got some synths that intrigues you, feel free to leave a comment and like and subscribe, of course. Okay, so in no particular order, I haven't ranked them. Uh, this isn't uh, a list of that kind. Uh, it's just a list of since I would like to get my hands on someday and since that um, uh, I would be able to get my hands on someday. Um, I'm not talking about the Jupiter 8, Jupiter 6, Jupiter 4. Uh, I'm not talking about the, the, the Kogu Trident and stuff like uh, Yamaha Series 80. Stuff like uh, that. Uh, they cost like yeah, way too much <laughs> uh, for my economy. Uh, these are synths that are obtainable by pretty much anyone who's interested in synths. So, I've got a list in front of me, of course. Uh, and the first one is Korg Wave Station uh, EX, uh, Korg Wave Station uh, period. <laughs> uh, I've never played one, uh, of course, I've listened to many. I've got the uh, BST version from Korg in my, in my door. Uh, but I would love to get my hands on a, a, a unit itself, a Korg Wave Station EX um, or AD, the rack mounted version. Uh, I think the, the pads and the sounds of, of the Wave Station is like no other synth. Uh, except, of course, the Korg Wave State, uh, uh, which was released a couple of years ago. But I think mm, a Korg Wave Station, and where I live, they go for around two or three hundred dollars. Um, the, mm, I, I would like a Korg Wave Station. And the next one uh, is a synth a keyboard I have never seen in real life. <laughs> It's a Roland D7T. Um, I've heard stories about the D7T. Um, they sound wonderful. Uh, people who play them think they are great keyboards. But uh, I heard stories about the D7T being the the, the follower for uh, after U20. And I had a U20. Uh, I wasn't impressed. And uh, supposedly... The D70 was made before the D50. You may correct me on that one. I I, I, I could be wrong. Uh, but the, they dis discovered that the D70 wasn't... I don't know. Well, move on. Uh, next on my list is the Roland SE02. Studio Electronics uh, uh, co cooperation with the Roland making uh, a Moogish, mini Moogish uh, synth um, a boutique. Uh, I've got, if you can see behind me, the... Uh, what's it called now again? <laughs> SH01A, uh, a lovely, um, lovely cl clone of the um, SH11. But the SE02 is the, uh, their version of the mini Moog. Uh, I would love to get my hands on one of those someday too. Not too expensive, but $400. Um, they, occasionally they go, uh, come up on on, uh, on on trading sites here in Sweden where I live. And uh, the next one is uh, JD08, another Roland, um, a boutique uh, based on the JD800. The monstrous VA synth that was released somewhere in the beginning in the beginning of the 1990s. Um, I think once again the sounds are quite similar to Wave Station, uh, quite similar to D70, I believe. Uh, I love those lush pads. I love those um, evolving sounds you get from the, from DJD08. It's um, 
virtual analog monster. <laughs> the, mm. the next one is Arturia Mini Brute 2. Uh, never played one once again, uh, but they go for pretty cheap. And I think, um, listening to YouTube videos, that they sound very good. And the version 2 has this um, mini patch bay uh, on the top right corner that I would love to temper on and, and uh, experiment with. Well, uh, speaking of analog uh, clones, we have the Behringer 2600. Uh, uh, of course, I would never, I could never afford an ARP 2600. And I think Berger's version looks and f seems like a good uh, clone of the uh, 2600. Ah, very intrigued. Um, and, of course, the voice of R2-D2 was made by, by 2600. Well, that's a selling point to me. <laughs> another one is uh, another VA synth from uh, Yamaha, uh, AN1X. Uh, once again, never played one, uh, know very little about it, um, but uh, I've seen, of course, YouTube videos about it, and I think it's a wonderful uh, kind of synth, and it, it was perhaps a bit too early in its days. I think the analog hype wasn't around at the time the A1X was released, and uh, I think it's time to Revive the AN1X. Okay, uh, moving on. The next one on my uh, little list is the Behringer DeepMind 12. Uh, an original synth from Behringer. Believe it or not, they, they don't always make clones. Uh, and I agree with the people who say, Behringer, please do your own stuff. Um, Deepman 12 is a very nice synth. Uh, once again, no too little about it to, to make a statement about the the, the value of it. But it's I think it's a synth I would really love to try out someday. And again, they are pretty cheap where I live. Uh, six seven hundred dollars. Then we got the Behringer TD3, another a clone from Behringer. Um, on Roland TD3. I don't like the TD3 sound, really. It's more like uh, suited for trans music, and that that isn't my bag. I make synth pop. I make rock music. I'm a guitarist too. So, um, but well, well, but I'm curious, curious about the TD3. What you can do, how you can tweak it, the sounds. Sometimes it's just nice to have a, a jam with something you're not used to have. Good. Well, okay, moving on. Next, Roland System 8 is one of the ex most expensive synths on this list. Um, I think I would prefer the System 8 before the like the X series, so like the Unix and Jupiter X. Uh, wouldn't say no to the, those either, but the System 8 is, I think it's um, a more complex, it's a more... Um, Accurate synth uh, emulating the, the analog circuits. So I, I would like a system or a system one, system one M, one M, uh, which is a small, you have lesser slots for plug out synths. But yeah, system eight or system one. Mm. And um, okay, next one on my list is the Arturia Micro Freak. Well, that's all I know about that one. I've seen it. A lot on YouTube. Uh, many say hail to the micro freak. Um, I, I must, I must try one one day. That's for certain. I haven't got the clue what they cost, but I think it's about five hundred, six hundred dollars here in Sweden. Um, mm -hmm. Arturia micro freak. Why not? Um, and the next one on my list is a synth that actually was uh, on sale uh, some months ago, just one mile away from where, where I live. And I I was so close to buying it, but ah, I bit my buying nerve. <laughs> I said, no, 
not this time, but but it's the Krumer Bit 99. And believe it or not, we have this had this in a, in a in a hobby shop uh, where I live when I was a pre teenager, <laughs> and I was looked at the Bit 99. And it was it was like a very cool gadget, and it sounds very Italian disco. Um, mm, I regret not buying it. It was like can't quite remember four hundred dollars perhaps around that's some money eh? not too cheap but not too expensive is it well that's the list for now uh of course this changes this list this um feeling about since i would like to try and buy someday it's a, it's an um ever evolving thing um mm. so this is the list right now um in, in next week, it will probably have some other synths in it. I don't know. Well, what do you think? What uh, synths intrigues you? Mm -hmm. Leave a comment. And please, like and subscri subscribe, of course. And uh, I will see you soon again. Take care. Bye-bye.